And we'll begin with some politics. And Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Atlanta today for her first Georgia campaign rally as a presidential candidate. The Harris campaign says its operation in Georgia is the largest of any Democratic campaign in history. It has mobilized hundreds of staff members across two dozen field offices. Georgia has also seen a real surge in volunteers, with more than 7,500 currently signed up in just one week. Harris's Atlanta appearance coincides with an endorsement from the state's former lieutenant governor. That's Republican Jeff Duncan crossing party lines there. In an opinion piece in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Duncan argued yesterday that Harris is the only viable means of defeating Donald Trump in November. So today's rally in Georgia is the Harris campaign's first step in its new plan to ramp up efforts in those key battleground states that are going to decide this election. The campaign reports more than 250 coordinated field offices across major swing states. It also has 600 staff members on the ground in the so-called blue wall states, states that have largely voted Democrat in the last several presidential elections, with an additional 150 staff planned to join next month. Harris's team said its volunteer numbers are growing as well. By the start of this week, the campaign had gained 360,000 volunteers. As for her Republican opponent, Donald Trump sat down for an interview with Fox News host Laura Ingham last night, where he continued his attacks against Harris's intellect and once again hedged on whether or not he would debate her. She's sort of incompetent. She's not very smart, but she's very radical, very radical. She got rid of the laugh. I noticed I haven't seen that crazy laugh that she got. She's crazy. That laugh, that's the laugh of a crazy person. But I noticed that she's not using that laugh anymore. Somebody convinced her, don't laugh, just don't laugh. I want to do a debate, but I also can say this. Everybody knows who I am, and now people know who she is. She's a radical left lunatic. She'll destroy our country. She wants open borders. And why not debate her? Well, wait. But because they already know everything. That's you right. know, I'm leading in the polls by, I think, a lot. I don't know. I hear different numbers. But I'm leading in all of the polls. I'm leading big in all of the swing states. I don't like rewarding fake news. I don't like rewarding the people that have been there. They're going to make tens of millions of dollars with this debate. In response to those comments, the Harris campaign released a statement accusing the GOP nominee of being scared, adding that Vice President Harris will be on the debate stage September 10th. Donald Trump can show up or not. So Eugene Robinson, let's start here with these attacks, these new attacks that Trump is trying out on Harris about her intellect, about her laugh. Seems to be the mark of a campaign that doesn't really know yet how to go after its new opponent. They don't, they don't have a clue at this point how to go after Kamala Harris. They were all set up. They had their plan A to go after Joe Biden's age and fragility. And now, obviously, they can't do that. And so what do they do? Do they go straight to she's a woman? Uh, do they go straight to she's a black and South Asian woman? Do they, uh, you know, this, this idea of trying to attack her intelligence um, it makes absolutely no sense given uh, who she is and what she has achieved in her life. Um, so they just don't know what to do. I mean, they're, they're, they're spinning their wheels at this point. And uh, we'll see. I assume at some point they'll come out with a more or less coordinated attack strategy, but they're nowhere near that now. So at least it would seem, as, as Eugene said, I mean, some of these attacks are, are borderline sexist and, and, and or flat out sexist. And, and, and Trump himself has not used DEI, that phrasing, as much as a lot of his fellow Republicans have, but it's all part of the same attack uh, line. It seems to me that, you know, there is still that sliver of people in this country who don't know who yet they're voting for. Some of those people are women or men who, who will be offended by these kind of comments. This, this seems really risky here. Kamala Harris is not defined yet by the majority of American voters, except for Donald Trump's base. They know who, they have their impression of Kamala Harris. That's obviously not going to change. 
Other than that, he needs to get to work. His campaign needs to get to work. This has been over a week and a half, and they haven't really landed an attack on her that's resonating. They are just so all over the place. You hear, you know, oh, she's not that bright. She uh, didn't, she failed at the border, but it's not coordinated. There's not any drumbeat going. And so as of now, I just, I would not give them a very high score on being able to define her. And also Trump seems very scared and weak about the debate. Jason Miller came on with Christian dancing on this network and said that Trump, Donald Trump definitely would debate. And that was not what Trump was saying last night to Laura Ingraham. He it, seemed to be hedging in a big way. And there's certainly worry about some of these attacks. On Fox Business yesterday, host Stuart Varney criticized Trump for calling Vice President Harris dumb. I've been hearing a lot from women. They are not happy with what Trump has been saying and some of the language that he's using about Kamala Harris. Don't forget that in addition to everything else going on for Donald Trump right now, he does owe hundreds of millions of dollars in civil fraud penalties, thanks to what he and his business got caught doing in New York State. As he embarks on yet another presidential run, a third presidential run, with that personal financial disgrace and pressure looming over him, he has gravitated more than you might even expect and more than he even has in the past to very eccentric, very right-wing billionaires, both for financial support and, interestingly, to tell him what to do, which he has then done directly to now repeatedly embarrassing effect. So, for example, Trump used to call Bitcoin and cryptocurrency a disaster waiting to happen. He said he was, quote, not a fan. He said crypto and Bitcoin were, quote, based on thin air. Well, now, after meeting with crypto lobbyists, he says he's going to make America the crypto capital of the planet. Trump was against TikTok. Trump was so against TikTok, he tried to ban it. Then he met with a billionaire who has a big stake in TikTok, and now he is a champion of TikTok. Trump promoted the right-wing boycott of Budweiser, right? Budweiser, oh, they're so left-wing, right? Which is insane in the first place. But it, that, that was a thing for the right, and Trump promoted those boycotts. Then an Anheuser-Busch lobbyist threw him a fundraiser, and Trump did a total 180. We should all be buying Budweiser now. Now it's electric vehicles. Trump has been railing against electric vehicles for years and, and, and really intensely for months now. Remember, it was part of his weird, rambling, never-ending speech at the RNC that there's an electric vehicle mandate, which there isn't. And he's going to free us from the fake electric vehicle mandate. He'll allow Americans to have gas cars again, since Joe Biden banned gas cars. Again, this is, a, this is not a true thing he was saying about Joe Biden or about there being any mandate about electric cars. But he has been on this riff for months about how electric cars are terrible and he will free us from the tyranny of electric cars. Except now he's just realized that this might make for an awkward relationship with Elon Musk, who is occasionally the richest man in this country and who owns a large electric car company. Once Elon Musk reneged a few days ago on what the Wall Street Journal had said would be a $45 million a month donation pledge to Trump, Trump has now started talking about how much he loves electric vehicles, how he drives them, how they're incredible, how they're so great. And, you know, you, you do that once. OK, maybe you evolved or maybe it's a coincidence or maybe you just got old and confused and forgot your previous stance. But it's everything now. It's on everything. Like, pick a topic. Trump takes position, meets billionaire who has opposite position. Trump then adopts opposite position. It's that, interesting. Doesn't, that doesn't make sense. How are you going to prosecute a prosecutor? That's what I'm saying. They don't even have their message in sight. Even their own surrogates can't even get it right. I mean, the reality is they're, they're in a complete disaster. The notion that they're saying they weren't prepared for the vice president to be running, that just shows where they're at right now. 
And they, did, they have no message. They have no argument. Their entire framing was Joe Biden is old. Well, your candidate is old. You have no policies, you know, no vision. And the reality is they have candidates who do not have anything to say to the American people, which is why we have seen so much energy for the next president of the United States. We will see how this all tumbles out. Uh, the Democratic uh, National Committee is happening August 19th. It's, that's when it begins. We will see uh, how this goes up until that point and beyond. Liam, Michael, thank you both for being here. John. All right. So we're seeing Donald Trump and his team flail about and they're flailing both in regards to their attacks on Kamala Harris, of course, but also in Donald Trump's financial desperation. And he is begging billionaires for money even harder than he did in 2016 and 2020. Look, Donald Trump always pretended like, oh, I have a self-funded campaign because I'm so rich that I don't need donations. I'll, I'll gladly take them, I guess, but I don't need them. And that was one of the things that he lied to people about. And that was one of his more effective lies in the sense that far too many people believed it, that he was beyond bribery. He was beyond um, being be, being lobbied by wealthy interests because Unlike other politicians who maybe had a bit of money, he was a, a, a real, real life billionaire and, and therefore had more money than he could ever need. Of course, that was all wrong. He was not nearly as rich as he pretended. And even if he was, his greed was irrationally massive and he always wanted just a little bit more. And now, though, he's desperate. And so you can see the attacks on Harris are calling her dumb. Like, no one believes that. Even Trump voters don't believe that. I'm convinced. Trump voters, a good chunk of them understand that Donald Trump is an idiot. I actually do believe that. They just think he's their idiot and his idiocy is leading them towards policies that they support. But no, re no reasonable person thinks Kamala Harris is dumb. Like, you might think she's wrong. You might think she's radical and extreme if you're a Republican, even though she's basically just a pretty normal liberal. But to think she's dumb, graduated from law school, went to some great universities, was a top le uh, uh, prosecutor in California, became the top lawyer of her entire state uh, in a state of the, the size of most countries, b bigger than almost every country in the world. Um the reality is, and then, of course, a U.S. senator and vice president. So Donald Trump is desperate. He wasn't this desperate against Biden. He wasn't this desperate against Clinton. He's only been this desperate now.